Hello and welcome back. My name is Brandon Rohr. I'm a Cloud Solutions Architect at Microsoft. And my name is Jeff King. I'm a Justice and Public Safety Solutions Architect at Microsoft. Uh, so in today's series, we're going to talk about IoT, which is Internet of Things. Um, and, and really what this boils down to, if we look at Internet of Things, uh, most people today are using some sort of IoT devices, and they may not know it. But and for law enforcement, um, it's becoming ever more important um, for them to do their policing. So we look at maybe smart weapons, camera systems, and drones, uh, license, license plate readers. Um, all these things could turn into an IoT-capable device that we use. So let's go a little deeper in Internet of Things. So Gardner actually projects uh, 25 billion things um, in 20, by 2020. And what that really means for IoT is, and IoT comes in, in really four categories. So if we're looking at the slide today, we have a group of things. Those things are Internet capable. Um, they connect through the Internet, and they produce some sort of data. And that data then can be used to produce analytics and some kind of uh, real-time reporting uh, system that gives some kind of outcome. Okay? If we take an average household item such as a thermostat, there's some thermostats on the market today that are actually IoT capable. Um, and if we, if we look at that and look at these four pillars here and assign that to the, the thermostat, the actual thing is the thermostat, the smart device that you may pick up from your uh, local hardware store. When you bring it home, you have to act connect it to the internet. And when you change the thermostat, it actually relays a message to uh, whatever SaaS provider you're using for your thermostat. That produces data which is stored. Um, and if you log into their website or smartphone, um, you can actually see trending based on your usage for your thermostat. So maybe when you leave work at 72 or 75, or maybe one month you had a high bill. Uh, you're not really sure why. You can then look, go back and use the analytics um, from the messages that were sent through IoT and really dive into, oh, as well, it's because my thermostat got changed for these four days. Um, so moving forward, this is very important in the public safety space to enable law officers with IoT. And I'm going to actually hand over to you, uh, Jeff, to talk a little bit more. Thanks, Brandon. So the Internet of Things is, is uh, you know, uh, an emerging set of technologies inside of law enforcement. Uh, we've already talked a lot about some of these in our, in our previous sessions today. Um, but, you know, these are some of the, the, the primary categories that we're seeing on the screen here. Um, there's a technology out there called ShotSpotter, uh, which, you know, provides real-time gunshot monitoring. And this is a series of microphones that is set up throughout, a, 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 you know, across the city and is then used to detect when uh, certain noises occur. In this, in this particular case, we're looking for gunshots. Uh, and this can be as accurate as, you know, the gun is fired, uh, the, the microphones then use triangulation to actually locate the, um, the exact coordinates as to where that gun was fired. Uh, and they can do additional things, you know, as detecting the caliber of the weapon, uh, you know, and, and, and even deeper analytics than that. Uh, you know, a second type of application is, is we're seeing a lot of, um, you know, uh, IP-based surveillance camera systems now where we can mount cameras almost anywhere uh, and, then, and then stream data off of them into some kind of a cloud-based cloud and hosted solution. Of course, then we've got some analytics that we can attach to those, uh, you know, where we've got surveillance cameras coming into a real-time crime center uh, and, and we can, you know, monitor that data through uh, some advanced analytics and, and respond accordingly. Um, police vehicles are all, or not, I shouldn't say all, but a lot of them now are, are equipped with uh, license plate readers uh, and other types of systems that are capturing data from uh, around the vehicle uh, and then relaying that back. We're also looking at other technologies and, and uh, particularly uh, you know, our camera vendors and some of the tactical gear partners that we have here at Microsoft uh, are looking to develop things like smart holsters. So how do we detect when you know, an officer is out in the field and they, uh, they draw their weapon out of their holster? How do we send a message back to uh, you know, a dispatch center uh, that an officer is, is, is in that type of scenario. And that's really what this is all about. So it's about getting all of that data into a single location where we can then respond to it intelligently. Great. So here's a couple um, real IoT use cases that we threw in. So you can see IoT is used everywhere. So it's actually hard um, in today's world for you to really leave your house without being around some sort of IoT device. A lot of the new vehicles are being equipped with IoT um, and smart uh, type devices. Uh, there's dog collars being developed so you can track your dog around the house. Um, so IoT is really an upcoming thing and I really believe that in 2020, Gardner statistics are correct. 
Uh, so next we'll talk about the connected officer. And the connected officer story um, it is, really, is really important story. So when Jeff was talking about uh, a holster, right? An, an officer is in a situation where uh, they draw their weapon. They probably didn't have time to use their radio to tell someone that they just drew their weapon. And maybe they you know, don't have that split second to, to radio in for help. So how great would it be if a officer drew their weapon and automatically that would actually relay a tiny packet information back to uh, the law enforcement agency for then someone to react for that real-time situational awareness, use that data, and then call in backup. So I actually built a demo using Azure IoT Hub which is a service we offer in Azure. Um, you can, within IoT Hub, you can provision a million different devices. I believe we support up to 300,000 messages per second. Um, so it's a very scalable uh, service that we have. So IoT Hub, so basically if we look at this, uh, we have devices such as an officer or, or a car relaying messages. Um, that goes into an IoT Hub, and in this, demo that I'm about to show you, um, I actually have set up what's called a cold path and a hot path. So a hot path is really the real-time data that's being sent that someone can then react on and then call in backup. The cold path is basically plucking that data from IoT Hub and sticking it in a structured or a non-structured database so that down the road, say a month or two months, um, somebody could then look at that data and perform uh, data analytics to gain business intelligence on that data. So let me blow out this here. So you can see we have um, IoT Hub using the hot path that actually goes to a map that I'll show you. So in the demo, uh, you actually see real longitude and latitude coordinates showing up on a Bing map when an officer draws a weapon. Uh, that then shows on the real-time Bing map and dashboard. Uh, and then the cold path actually gets uh, plucked off by Stream Analytics. It gets sent to a uh, document DB database in Azure. And then I have a Power BI dashboard that I developed to show you uh, trends on the data. So let's take a look at the IoT officer demo. Um, here I have a website, um, and then this website uh, communicates through the IoT hub. There's no other data layer um, or any other business logic there, um, no SQL, nothing. So all communication and traffic that I'm going to show you actually is routed through the IoT hub. Brandon, is this, this is a simulation, right? Just yep, this is a clear. simulation, yeah. correct. Okay. Uh, we do have some partners today working on this concept, though. Okay, and so what are we actually simulating from a device perspective here? Sure, yep, so a device perspective. So let's picture an officer here, and this officer um, could have certain types of events in the field. So an officer, obviously, is going to have a longitude and latitude, so their location of the particular officer. And this officer, in certain circumstances, we may want to relay messages uh, for real-time situational awareness, maybe when he has unholstered his weapon, or maybe when his body-worn camera was activated, or maybe his car light bar was activated. So maybe let uh, someone know that uh, they're pulling someone over, or they're in a car chase, um, or maybe his car trunk got, came open. Um, there's some other use cases where um, officers could be wearing a wearable device, such as a Microsoft Band, uh, to get heart rate and some other uh, telemetry uh, so that if they were in a foot pursuit and the heart rate had raised, uh, to let someone know uh, just because it's out of the ordinary. Excellent. So the, the, each one of these buttons then would simulate an IoT sensor? That is correct. Okay. Let's see the demo. Sure. So right here I have six officers. Okay. Each of the officers are getting independent longitude and latitude around the city of Charlotte. So there's a picture of bounding box. Uh, the officers can't leave uh, the city of Charlotte. Um, so when we click a button, say Officer 1 uh, drew his weapon, okay? You can see that Officer 1, uh, the slide here at the bottom came up. That actually sends an IoT message uh, telling, that, telling IoT Hub that Officer 1 at this location just drew his weapon. If we then look at the actual map over the city of Charlotte, uh, which is on a separate tab here, you can see that immediately on that map, uh, within less than a second, the officer was pinpointed on that map. If I then click on the event, I can zoom in and see exactly where that officer was. Um, and if this was a real situation, I could immediately call for backup for that officer. 
So in this type of, of situation too, um, would you foresee the ability to potentially connect to like a body-worn camera that that officer was wearing as well? Would that be considered a sensor device in this case? Absolutely. So are you referring to if, if an officer drew a weapon, maybe automatically turn his camera on? Absolutely. Yep. Or, or have somebody back from a you know, central uh, real-time crime center or dispatch center be able to actually pull that officer's location up on the map and see what they're seeing, right? Yes, yes, most certainly, like in some SWAT scenario. So um, basically automatically then do live streaming of that body-worn camera uh, back to headquarters. Okay. If I go back to the IoT uh, dashboard here and I unclick uh, the button, you can see that the officer actually drops from the map. Um, built into this demo to actually simulate a lot of messages, uh, we built a kind of auto mode uh, baked into it. So if I turn auto mode on, you can automatically see every 2,000 milliseconds a button will be randomly clicked for these six officers. If we go back over to the map here and scale zoom out, okay, you can start seeing that events are starting to show up in real time on the map. So you can see for a large city or even a small city, um, certain events could start plopping on map, and then uh, the agency and law enforcement agency could react to these events. Um, and why I built this simulation in here is really to populate data, to kind of show you the analytics aspect of it. So if I turn uh, the auto mode off here, and I go over to uh, report, okay, I actually built a Power BI report um, on all the data that's actually sent through the IoT Hub. This is stored in a document DB database. You could store it in a MongoDB, a SQL Server, blob storage. It could be really any database that you're pulling data from. Um, but this just shows the power of storing this data and then being able to aggregate and run reports on it. So for a given period, if I wanted to see officer number three and all the events and locations that he had certain events, you could immediately see the certain events that he had. So if I hover over Officer 1 for this guy, you can see that at this longitude and latitude, he actually had his car trunk opened. Um, for this bullet, he had his weapon unholstered. So this just shows you the power of the analytics platform after you start capturing all these data and key events. That's great. And that concludes the demo. So thanks, Brandon. Uh, so just to summarize, you know, as I said, you know, we, Brandon and I and our, and our team, we get to spend a lot of time with different law enforcement agencies uh, all over the country. Uh, this gives us a lot of perspective and insight into some of the solutions they're working on. And we really hope that this series has been helpful, uh, you know, at least just to create some initial ideas, uh, you know, as to some of the other challenges agencies are having. Uh, you know, whether it be data-driven response or the public safety video, citizen connection, or the Internet of Things. Um, if you guys would like to go deeper on this, please reach out to us. Um, our contact information is included uh, at, the, at the front of each one of these uh, presentations. We will make the presentations downloadable. We also have a list of partners. As I said, you know, our whole ecosystem is really based on ISV partners. Um, you know, and you can go in and actually see a list of all of the partners who have deployed their solutions in Azure uh, and, and are really taking advantage of that CGIS capable environment. So we'll have all of those links uh, in, the, uh, you know, in the landing pages and thank you pages of uh, these particular series. So please go ahead and reach out. You know, we're really excited to be part of uh, you know, some of the social change and the technology that is connecting agencies together. Uh, you know, there's some big things coming. Uh, you know, I think in, in terms of, uh, of how law enforcement and the community are going to work together. So we've actually built a, uh, a patrol vehicle called the Microsoft Advanced Patrol Platform uh, that we feel demonstrates some of the, uh, as I said, the, the functionality and capabilities of our IoT platform, bringing together, uh, you know, a set of, of law enforcement based solutions uh, into a, a police vehicle. Uh, Jeff and I will actually both be at IACP uh, this year, which is October 15th in San Diego, 2016. Uh, Jeff, will that patrol car be there? Absolutely. So you'll be able to come and actually check out our patrol car, uh, talk to one of us um, and other people on our team, as well as meet some of our partners who will be helping us with, uh, with, with some information in our booth. Thank you very much. Yep, thank you.